Well, it has been a interesting summer being a camp host. As you can see, I got the golf cart that they provide for us loaded up with a firewood for sale sign. And there's some firewood in the back. And I've got some more I've got to prep because we are trying to get rid of the last little bit of firewood that we have. I'm going to take some with me so that I'm already set up for the winter. But in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys proper technique on how to use an axe and a hatchet. As for my raft, I got it out a few times this summer. I'm hoping that I can get it out more next summer for sure. I'm not sure if I'm going to do the campground host bit again, but who knows? My detailing business makes more money. So when I was out here, I've met a lot of interesting people being a camp host. I'll tell you that right now. And there's a lot of fun in being a camp host. And I have one camper in particular, which is the reason why I'm making this video, because this person just had a great energy, was a totally awesome person. They're new to nomadic life. So they kind of are trying to wing it and see where it goes and make the best of everything that happens. But they were wanting firewood, but didn't have an ax or a hatchet. So I went ahead and did them an ultimate favor. I went to the hardware store and I purchased them an ax and a hatchet so that they can have it. Because if you're going to live nomadically, you have to have an ax, you have to have a hatchet. And if you can get your hands on a chainsaw, by all means get a chainsaw. But make sure that it's gas. Don't get electric because nomadic living, you can't always have power. Especially depending on how your rig is set up. So, I'm going to go ahead and give you a couple of demonstrations on how to split a couple of different size logs and how to utilize proper technique while using your axe and your hatchet to make it easier on you so that you're not wearing yourself out. And I'll even kind of show you the method of chopping that usually works the best if you have to down a dead tree that's standing up. So, you all know my axes and I'm in the process of putting a new handle on yaks right now. I have that handle right here, which I will probably do a video on, but it's going to be a very lengthy video because there is quite the process to deal with when you're putting new handles on axe blades. So I'm not going to be using yaks in this video. Instead, I'm going to be using Doug. Now, <laughs> if you've watched any of my other videos on axes, I was a big fan of Dig Doug growing up on the Atari. And with this axe, I just decided to name it Doug. It didn't have a name when I got it, so I finally named it. Yaks, on the other hand, I've showed you before, Yaks. So, Yaks had a name, so it kept the name. But, I like this axe because not only is it an axe, but it is also a style of garden hoe. It's tr It's got trenching capabilities and prying capabilities. This is known as a Pulaski axe. And Forest Service use it to trench out guidelines for fires, chop down trees, pry up roots, and all kinds of stuff. As a camp host, this axe right here is very helpful because somebody will drive in a tent stake they can't get it out and it ends up stuck there. So you could just stick that end under it and pry it up just like a crowbar. So these axes are awesome to have with you if you are going to be in the forest. They are on the little bit of a heavy side, but that plays to your advantage. For kindling, the Fiskar. This is a very lightweight axe. It got a lot of reviews on YouTube. I've still been testing it and I honestly really like this axe. So we're going to be using this particular hatchet axe for kindling firewood and the Pulaski for splitting. One more thing when it comes to axes, before I get into the technique, is your blade. You want to make sure your blade is sharp, but not tapered in long ways to the edge of the blade. You want a nice short taper like a butcher's knife and an extremely sharp edge. The main reason why is because you want the metal to be as thick as possible 
as far up on the blade so that you don't end up damaging your blade and your blade ends up looking like that one right there. Now this was from my last video where I was chopping on my trailer and my trailer has a long lag bolt and I kept hitting the top of the lag bolt which is why this blade is all nicked up like that and you can even see that the angles are extremely long on how this was sharpened the last time it was sharpened. So I'm going to put a new handle on it and take care of it. But in the meantime, on to the techniques. So, I've got a couple of demonstration logs here that you can see. And I'm going to turn the camera just a little bit. Just like that. So I've got your standard, which is the longest log that I would burn. And I would normally chop this one-handed. But I'm going to go ahead and do the beginner's proper techniques on how to start learning how to use your axe. I've also got a longer one just to see what happens. And then one that's a little on the dry side. So I want to cover one thing real quick. Your chopping block. This log was cut and it's still technically a little damp on the inside. And so this is wet wood that you wouldn't burn. It's the perfect height for me. You always want to make sure that your chopping block is tall enough to not meet that 90 degree angle any to get down to your legs. You want, boom. You want to be as close to that 90 degree on the finishing motion of your chop when you come through your wood into your chopping block. Mainly so that you don't end up coming down and accidentally hitting your leg or your foot. Okay, so this one, little low, but it's still okay for me, all right? So we're going to go ahead and get this one set up, and I'll show you your distances. When you first want to learn how to chop, you need to position yourself far enough away from your log so that you don't have to worry about being too close or too far away. So what you do is you go to the middle of your log right here, you keep whatever is your non-dominant hand at the base just like that with a nice good grip right on the edge of the taper right here just like that depending on your hand size so that your other hand is in this motion and you want to be extended right about there at most and this at a minimum so it's a real short window of how far you are with your elbows in the bend from the block that you you're planning to chop your wood on. Get into a comfortable position and judge that distance. Now that that distance has been judged, you're gonna wanna hold your ax like this when you go to start chopping because there's a lot of weight to lift that thing up and you need more than just a down force like this. Okay, because with a down force like this, even if I come all the way back here, you don't get much, okay? So what you really want is you want to be able to hold your ax like this, position yourself at the distance you need, right there for me, and I'm going to put my hand up here. The reason I'm going to put my hand up here is because I need that upward motion coming around like this so that I can throw the ax tip up in the air and swing it down accordingly. This is also where you need to learn how to slide this hand. So when you come up, right about here, you've got that upward momentum force. You can let go of the head, slide down like that, and come into your wood, okay? So literally, you have to learn up here, kind of fling it, slide this hand down and then come down into your wood with all of the down force you can put down on it so that you're not trying to wear yourself out chopping like this or trying to chop like that okay so it should look something like this just like that okay so I got one more piece I can go ahead and split so we're going to do that one more time so that I can show you. Distance yourself correctly. 
get into a comfortable stance for you. Axe, look just like this in your hands. Bring it up, slide, and drive your downforce. Just like that. And you can see the angle of the axe when it lands and sticks into the chopping block. And that keeps me safe for my legs and feet so that this axe blade doesn't come down and hit my leg. Okay, now when you first start learning how to get this motion down, you start doing this. Distance yourself correctly from right here and just like that. Slide your hand down halfway down the handle, just like that. And that will get used to hitting the same spot every single time. So that when you go to split wood, you're being more efficient and less tiring. And every once in a while you get one that does that. So you'll pop your handle just down like that. Be careful, you can hurt your hand if you hit it too hard. And just kind of give it a little bit of a rock and it'll come right out. Now, when wood does this to you, there's usually a gnarly knot somewhere in the wood that is keeping it from splitting. So every once in a while, you can hit it multiple times. Depending on the wood too, this might just happen to you. It might take multiple hits just to split a piece of wood. So there's a small chunk right there. I'm gonna hit it one more time because I basically found the knot right in here. And that's what's keeping this from splitting mostly. Okay, so that one's done. Now, always make sure that your chopping block is nice and wide and always wider than anything you, you plan to split. So with this one right here, you really wouldn't want a chopping block like that unless you're only doing kindling. You can see the difference in the two. You want something nice and wide and something tall. If you got a tree stump that you can designate or dedicate to being a chopping block, awesome. So logs like this, these are too big for your normal wood stoves. So normally you wouldn't try to chop this by hand, but I figured I'd give it a shot anyway, just to see what happens. Now, I will say that the heavier your ax head is, the axe is about three and a half. This is about three and three quarters as far as pounds go. The heavier can sometimes be the better for the axe itself. Okay, you see how much downforce I had to put on that? Now that's honestly on the dangerous side and I'm gonna show you why. You see what just happened to the chopping block right here? I came down and because I had so much to get down to my chopping block, the blade slipped out through the wood and hit the edge. So you never really want to try splitting wood that is over 16 inches in length. Anything over 16, you would want more of a hydraulic gas powered log splitter. Okay, now that happened because there's that knot. So like I said, sometimes you can go down, other times you can go up. It just depends on how your ax is stuck in and every once in a while how you can manipulate it. When you have a situation like this, sometimes you just stick your ax blade in just like that and fry it. And that way you'll be able to split the wood like that. So now that I covered your beginner's techniques and everything you need to learn how to start using your big axe, we're going to go on to kindling with the hatchet. So I'm going to go ahead and move the camera again.
and we are going to go right over here just like that mostly so I could sit down because it's so much easier when you get to sit down and do this now with kindling I'm not gonna try to kindle this this is way too long so instead I'm gonna grab this one right here which is the longest I would normally use for my wood stove 16 inches is pretty optimal size length for using campfires and stuff like that so I've got this set up right now I'll bring you a little bit closer just so you can get a really good idea and I'm gonna angle the camera down just a little bit now with kindling you don't want to be using your big axe if you are using your big axe choke it pretty high on the handle okay so that you don't have too much weight to work with and when you're doing kindling with just your axe only you are literally using the weight of the axe and a small little drive motion so you know you can see how effective that is it's not really unless you want to pick it up and beat it ridiculous all the time constantly go for it but honestly I would not try to kindle with an axe unless I had to so if I had to I'm gonna drive it in just like that and then my next one will be just like that because that just sheared off this little piece which is perfect so once you have your axe stuck in it you can do it you can drop it like that if you feel comfortable with two hands and then same thing right here with this little piece that just came off I'm gonna drive it and I'm gonna just sit here and tap it okay so that'll help you kindle with your axe if you don't have a hatchet now if you have a hatchet like this little Fiskar then you can put a lot more downforce in it and you want to be sitting in an area where no matter what your swing will not hit your legs in any way as you can see I'm right here so my knees are kind of in danger so I usually sit like this so that if I do have a foul hit it will come down either here or here or somewhere on the chopping block itself so with the hatchets get a really good firm grip on it judge what's going to work for you okay now I'm going to do this a little close for the first one and then it's a flick of the wrist while bringing the weight down from the from the hatchet and the force that you can put into it with your arm bringing it down just like that and then once you get your little piece like this you just literally tap it lock it in place and just bounce it a couple times just like this now the cool thing about that is it gives you these little tiny sticks which depending on how small you want your kindling you could just keep going with it because all you really need to do is just tap the tip of your hatchet into the wood and then just give it a little bounces and next thing you know you end up with kindling like that now I'm gonna move this just a little bit It's heavy because it's still literally wet. It's like a fresh tree that was cut up. We have a lot of blowdown in the forest where I'm at too. So in high wind storms, the trees will just fall over. And the root balls will come ripping up out of the ground. So this is probably one of those logs that was cut from one of those trees that went ahead and fell this season. So we'll cover this one more time. Right there. Okay. Now I'm going to bring this up and I'm basically going to bring my arm down like that and twist my wrist so that I can not only add down force to the axe itself, but I can manipulate the head and fling it with my wrist to utilize all the weight that the axe head has on this particular hatchet. You see what I mean? 
and I caught the edge right there still not the greatest but at least it caught the edge but if it didn't and it chipped like it did over here it would have went straight between my legs so one more time I'm gonna do this one rather slow so okay just like that and right here so that you end up with that end result depending on how high you are okay just like that you ideally want to have this set up at the halfway point of whatever piece of wood you're planning to split so that this is your most comfortable point and the follow through is just a little bit more to rest on this particular chopping block so dealing with pieces of wood that have knots in them like this are a little bit more involved the best way to do this is find the middle point on the knots and just come down in it. Sometimes it'll lock up like this. You don't want to be twisting this like you would a big axe. So just pull it out with the rocking motion just like with the big axe and then take another shot at it. Okay. You still don't want to be doing this. You see how it doesn't do anything? So take a third shot at it if you have to. And I missed. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put this piece of wood back together. So that I can show you. There you go. So you know that I'm not messing around and putting it together a different way. All right. Just like that. There it is. So aside from the one that I missed right here those are my hits every single time and that's what you want to get is you want to get the same spot as many times as you possibly can consistently to ensure that you are splitting the same portion of wood same thing with the big axe okay so we're going to go one more time just for fun and i'm actually going to use another one with a knot right there just so you guys can see them there's two of them I'm going to put it right like this so that my axe stroke comes into the middle and I'm going to put more force on this one. Okay. That's what the consistency of being able to strike the same spot over and over and over gives you. It gives you the ability to add more power when you're bringing the axe down. You can use all your upper body strength and everything and just whale that thing into wood and you are good to go. And then once you're down to your kindling, Literally, tap, 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 tap. And you can fine tune your kindling to whatever size you want. So, I hope that was helpful. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video, even though it was just literally splitting wood. But, uh, like I said, I was making this video for a specific person that camped at the campground that I was at that I felt could really use this information to fine tune their ability to use an axe and a hatchet so you guys let me know what you think if you like the video leave a like on it hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed share the video with a friend you never know who's going to be you know benefiting from something like this and you never know who might need to watch something like this and other than that we are pretty good to go all right so you guys take care and i will see you next time